So let's look at this one. It's a little easier than an arrangement of Blue Tango I looked at earlier, but some of the same problems perhaps. So in the first measure, starting at the beginning this time, all you have to do is just jump the thumb from A to G, but otherwise you're in what's essentially a C major five finger position. So when you start, just check the thumb is here. Maybe some pedal, I don't know. I kind of like it, seems to add orchestral warmth to the piece. And then, same thing. If you're using the pedal, you might as well do this. My, my right hand instantly jumps right here. Uh, let's get you going. Right there, roughly speaking. All right, so my pedal is doing the holding. I'm jumping down where essentially my thumbs are sharing the same key. Sometimes, you know, people find which hand goes inside the key to make it a little easier to share, but you could probably share like this too. So the other alternative is you don't use the pedal, in which case to connect the C, the long half note C, you have to flick over your second finger. And then as you play the second finger, boom, right? So whatever move you decide to practice, just practice it. that move or that move. So either instant position shift or flick over and then extend, flick the thumb out if you do less pedal. Continuing on. Now here, same thing as you're holding that G, think this. This to me implies some pedaling if you choose to jump to finger two, but um, let's see. So I'm already holding my second like this and dab the pedal down. Even if I'm not using the pedal much in this intro, I can still use it for legato connection, right? And then I can do the jump. That or it doesn't really matter which fingers you use. At the very end, I would probably go with something like this myself, but as I said, it's, it's your choice. Now, of course, pedal shown so that you can do this jump. Boom. And I like to mark those things in right away. Yeah, so I know I'm not just dealing with a long note, I'm also dealing with a position shift right away. Whatever. Let, let's look at what's coming up. There it is. One, three. Yeah, it's reversed, but okay. So three on top, one at the bottom. Spread out in the left hand. Yeah, I, I like the fingerings, nothing that I would change. Reminds me of that habanera accompaniment in the left hand that was also in the blue tango arrangement from earlier. Yeah, the only thing I would caution here is first position the second on A. So as you are working through this, how do I do this better? Something like that. No. No, still missed. All right, one of those days I'll get it. But yeah, so hold the second finger on A and then maybe right there change to B. Yeah, so I have a little adjustment in the, in the right hand. 
zoom back out. So first on A. Now on B. Just stop and check those kinds of things. So stop, back up. Right, so whenever you have a position change, I keep droning on and on about it. Use those as stopping moments and checking moments. Right. Ah, actually, I completely went the, the other direction with this. You know what? Both my idea and what I see here, I don't think are optimal. So my revised idea is, let's do this. I just had it. Yeah, I think that that would work nicely. So let's first of all, get rid of that little square. What we're going to do is put finger two on this G right here. And that means you can do that jump. You've got a 2-5, then a 1-5, right, 1-5, and then finally 1-4. And that perfectly positions us to play this with 3, and the rest is all set. fits the hands nicely this way. Okay, so let's back up and kind of work through the whole thing. So first, second finger on A, and then just reposition both of those second and fifth fingers to G and E. I really think pedal is necessary here. I mean, we can try it without the pedal. kind of works, it just loses some of that orchestral color that's implied in, in, well, I mean, this is a musical, right? And so this way, the only thing that really has to move is the thumb in the, in the right hand, uh, which is pretty easy to control. And I guess the fifth finger at first. Reposition. So that thumb thumb. Again, the thumb can already come up because you're probably pedaling. Right, then uh, at this point, all you have to do is just move the thumb back and forth between E and F. But here, if we want that, a couple of little adjustments in, in both hands. So let's figure those out. That's one. Right, so that's one stopping point. This is something I always debate about. We can reposition right here. Right, in the right hand we can move right away. Put the pedal down, so just move the fingers. But there is also something nice about coordinating position shifts in both hands simultaneously. Simultaneously, uh, for example, like this. Right, that way you're kind of thinking, oh, there is a move I have to do, both hands do it. Right there, one beat three and then I'm set. I have experimented with both ways over the years. Sometimes one makes more sense, sometimes another way makes more sense. So try it out both ways. Right away. And then the, the, right, uh, the left hand follows or both together. That's it. As you play those two and three, quick reset of finger two right here. Just 
so I cannot do it. There it is. Um, it again by playing the pedal, you can move at any point right away. Even if you're not using the pedal, you can hold the third finger on, on F, right? And so you're not really hearing that gap in the left hand like that. You can connect nicely even without the pedal. All right, so that's that line. Let's keep going. Never mind. iPad wakes up. Here it is. Now, this is a tricky one. It probably makes sense to go into uh, that 1-5 you see at the bottom of the score screen and then instantly reposition with finger 3. That just kind of gives you that extra security that, yep, three is ready to go same thing second finger doesn't want to do it naturally but if you just kind of force it onto a uh, um, and if you have decided to do the above fingers just copy them down but In, even if you stay with one five, one four, one three, again they're kind of reversed uh, vertically. But I would still recommend jumping to that three, as you see above. So let me let me point those out, copy that down if you prefer, but definitely use that. That's this three I think is far superior to this four. All right, let's keep going. Nice thing is it's a very, it's basically a repeat of the above, except for the final measure. For some reason, no F and A on that uh, third measure, but whatever. Again, that move that I'm showing in the final me uh, measure of this line, I would really practice it. As you're playing the G, you've got the pedal down, just go. Now here, as you play C, practice this move. I cannot do it. There. Practice putting the second finger on B right away. Right, so that second finger pulls in and you're ready to go. Now is one a good idea i think so it forces you to use oh by the way let me go ahead and reset my screen it's gonna work no for some reason it's not working ah no now it's working okay so i think right get that two over here and now by putting one under, then going to the second on G, again, you're in perfect position for the next couple of measures on this final line of the piece, or of the final line of the first page of this piece. Right, but as you play the second finger on this final line, make sure to do this. Well, again, I cannot quite get it just perfect. Make sure the first finger goes on that C. Right? That's your goal at this downbeat, which means as you come out, you're some, some like one here, right? That's you can kind of see that line above that left hand one. And as you play the downbeat, boom. Right? So stopping on, let's say yellow. And this move has to happen and the only way it's going to happen if you stop and check if you don't stop usually it doesn't get learned there it is. then 
once you've checked, once you're in position, continue. Now, here the lower bracket, that red bracket, indicates the position of all those notes. It doesn't indicate put the pedal down and uh, hold it down because, of course, the pedal will come up right here and then come up right here and then come up right here and so on and so on. So, um, yeah, that's just the position change bracket for the left hand. Or not position change, but position keep. Now here, I would encourage people to really flick out the thumb as soon as possible, right here. This way you're not having to do it in the last moment, you're just getting used to this sort of playing. Right, you're slightly at an angle with the uh, long fingers. But then you're in position. Also, maybe do this. Just a couple of micro adjustments, there it is. Uh, Thumb at first, th that first square, and then third finger for that second square. So start in here, stop and check, right? This has to happen. Stop and check, this has to happen. And then this one, yeah, I think that's good. The, the final two measures are fingered quite well. Yeah, that nasty fourth finger motion has to take place. So as you play the C and A, right here, put the fourth finger down. A little bit of a stretch. extra pedal change right here but yeah that first page gives a good sense of the arrangement the kind of left hand we can expect the right hand uh, it does get a little more complicated I suppose with some rhythmic pulsing later on but uh, I think working through these issues will go a long way to mastering the rest of the piece so I'm just going to review real quick and then and then call it a day. Starting with that second finger on A, as you can see with a small square. And as you jump from E to F with the thumb, just kind of get used to that notion of a slight little jump. You probably don't need to put it in, but that awareness helps. So you're really playing that E staccato, right? With the pedal down. One thing I didn't really mention is it's much more common to hold the, the octave shape in uh, any hand really, left or right. And so by default you would probably start out with the fifth finger on E. If your fingers are long enough you can try stretching it out to F. That's of course where you're, you're going to have to go. But if you can't, as you play that one and four, F and D, really practice that shift. So, so not only are you shifting uh, the thumb, you're also making sure the fifth finger is in position. So I'll put that in as, as something to uh, watch. Right, so maybe that moment where you've got those two little squares, square and a <laughs> squished square, uh, just move the position like this, stop and check. And then, that's a big one, right? So if you decide to go with my solution of 2-5 jumps to 2-5, just do that. Essentially, you're going from here back to here. You were on E to E, maybe, most commonly. Uh, and then you're on F to F, and then you're back to E to E. That's something like this. Ooh, I, I, I misspoke. So not E to E, but 
F to E. That's also a un slightly unusual moment. So that, oh, let me put the orange highlight. At that point, you actually have to check. So you're here on F to F, and now you're kind of squeezing your position to your thumb. Yeah. <laughs> then you do get back to the thumb to E, but not right away. In fact, you go to D in the fifth finger. So a lot of little micro adjustments, which is kind of part of the reason this is circled, perhaps. So first jump, and then not what I was initially saying, just go back. That's stupid. Do that, and then. So, yeah. Once you start digging deeper, you realize there are all these little details that make it much less straightforward than you wish it to be. Lots of fast mo micro adjustments. So again, if you're struggling and there's just too much going on, use my backwards uh, practice approach where you're here. All right, let's say you're Cyan, yeah, you're just holding this, all good, you're in position, all prepared, but then 1 5 to 1 4, for example, that's all you're doing. You're here, and now you're here. This way, you master just the thumb move. Okay, then go back to let's say green. Right? You're holding this down, you're thinking, I have to do this 1 5 and then the 1 4. Thumb is in position. And then I have to go. Maybe you would even change the pedal one more time on that second beat, maybe. Yeah. But in any case, you're practicing just this specific segment and nothing else. That's it. And then eventually, starting with that si uh, brown before the green, you're like here, you've moved. I screwed up, right? So get ready. So until you have that sense of boom, 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 and all the little micro adjustments are taking place correctly, then maybe move on so you're not piling on too much at once. And then we've gone through this. Oh, um, forgetting to remind you. At this point, we talked about it, but I didn't write it down. Let's make sure you're putting the second finger on G. In fact, no, why am I saying this? It's already on G. That's why I didn't put it down. Haha. -ha. Maybe that's more my issue. If I don't start practice from the right position, then I'm in trouble. And that's anybody's issue. If you don't start in the right position, then practice is sort of not the right kind of practice. So I'm here. You see my thumb having to go back and forth, back and forth, but ultimately this is much easier. Bring maybe both hands at the same time, right? Like this, the third measure. This next line is very similar. You go to one, oops, sorry, one five, one five, and then change to three. Yeah. One more time. All right, this way you're, you're ready to continue. So you can maybe mark it with indigo. Check. And then continue. If you prefer ultimately one five one four one three pattern or my idea three here, I really I mean, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put this down three right there. Why do I have that strange square? I have no idea. 
All right. Anyway, I'm going to have to break for today, uh, but ask any questions.